they're, they're putting uh, so much technology into cars nowadays, you can control all sorts of aspects of your car from your smartphone, including starting the engine, starting the air conditioning, uh, checking on its location. Well, if you can do it with your smartphone, anybody else can um, over, over the internet. A lot of the technology that is being adopted into cars, they're being treated like any other mobile device, like a cell phone or a tablet, and in fact, uh, the popular operating systems that are being used in cars nowadays are developed by uh, BlackBerry or uh, Android, for example, uh, which is, you know, the, the most popular uh, smartphone operating system on the planet, is uh, now extending its reach into cars. The problem is that the purpose of cell phone technology is to be flexible, to be adaptable, to have new features all the time. It was never designed to keep people safe. But the difference between hacking into somebody's smartphone and stealing their credit card number and hacking into somebody's car is that cars kill people. A car is, you know, two and a half tons of, of metal hurtling down the, the road at 65 miles per hour with your kid strapped into the back seat. Um, you know, that's not something that you want anybody other than the driver of the vehicle to have control over. You know, take General Motors, for example. They sold three million cars last year in the United States. And if every one of those cars is connected to the Internet and every one of those cars is running the same software, you find a vulnerability in one of those uh, cars, you've, you've found a vulnerability in the entire fleet. Somebody could potentially hack all three million of those cars. And uh, then you've got a, a major disaster on your hands. The reason we're concerned about this right now is that at present there are about 50 million connected vehicles on the roads today in the, in the U.S., but that number is growing very, very rapidly, particularly uh, starting this year when it will become nearly impossible to purchase a new car that does not have an internet connection. What I would advocate uh, is that the safety critical systems within the car need to be completely separated. Uh, the term is air-gapped from the parts that are connected to the internet. You can have most of the features that you want, uh, but uh, it just needs to be done in a safe way, and the auto industry is not doing that. Now with this kind of technology, with, with uh, fleets full of connected cars on the road, this, the same kind of damage can be done, but it can be done without terrorists or uh, invaders having to put their feet on U.S. soil, and uh, it can be done from, from anywhere in the world and for a fraction of the price. Well, it's hard to say. I mean, you can use the uh, bug bounties that car companies pay out to white hat hackers as sort of a, uh, an, an estimate of the, uh, the, the market cost of uh, one of these hacks. Uh, Tesla right now, I think, is, is paying the, the highest bug bounty in the industry of uh, $15,000 for a critical vulnerability in a car. Um, even if it takes several of these strung together to take control of a car, and even if uh, you charge uh, some sort of a premium if you're uh, selling this vulnerability to a, uh, a hacking organization. I mean, it can still be done for, you know, easily under half a million dollars, and this is chump change if you're talking about Vladimir Putin, if you're talking about Kim Jong-un, if you're talking about uh, any foreign power, or even most terrorist groups. So if you look at the case of the 2015 uh, Jeep hack uh, that with uh, Charlie Miller and Chris Valasek, they hacked in through the radio, which was internet connected, and from there were able to get a uh, connection onto the car's uh, CAN bus, which is kind of like the central nervous system of the car that controls everything else. And from there, they were able to do all these other things, deactivate the brakes, kill the engine, that sort of thing. What Fiat Chrysler Motors, Jeep's parent company, did in response to that is they plugged the hole in the radio that the hackers used to get in. What they did not do was disconnect the radio from the rest of the car, which is a very simple thing to do. Uh, it's, this, this does not require uh, any kind of sophisticated technology, and that would have prevented not just that problem from happening again. So the short-term solution that we'd like to see is to uh, install a, a kill switch in the car. Now, this is something very simple. This is 19th century technology, just, just a little mechanical switch. Uh, it doesn't cost very much, maybe about 50 cents per car. And uh, what this does is disconnect the internet-connected parts of the car from the 
safety critical parts of the car, the parts of the car that control the motion of the vehicle. Um, if you do that, this is not going to stop anybody from hacking your car, but what this will do is in the wake of some sort of a major uh, incident, uh, some sort of a fleet-wide hack, it will give us a way to restore our confidence in our cars and know that they cannot be hacked again. Uh, you just flip the switch into the safe position and uh, everything's fine. The auto industry has been working hard to try to make cars safe for a long time and it just hasn't been effective. We are no safer now than we were before. What does it mean that the internet is connected to safety critical systems in a car if a malicious hacker gets access to those safety critical systems? Well, the safety critical systems in a car are, you know, they're, they're all electronic and you connect them up to the internet, the uh, hacker can control the brakes, can, you know, cause them to activate, cause them not to work at all. Uh, the hacker can control the steering, the hacker can control the acceleration, the hacker can blow the airbags in your face. You know, if the flaw that the hacker exploited in your car is uh, the, the same flaw that's in three million other cars, you know, now you've got a fleet-wide hack. Now you've got this happening simultaneously to cars uh, across the country. You've got major gridlock. You've got uh, an excuse for us to uh, go to war, clamp down on civil liberties, all sorts of awful consequences. Everything we saw after 9-11, only worse. Well, so the, the problem with open source software is that it has... Um, you know, oftentimes literally thousands of different authors from all over the world, and there's no accountability for the quality of it. You can't go back to the original author necessarily and say, you know, hey, does, does this thing actually work the way it's supposed to, or can you help us fix this bug? Um, it's great for doing, uh, you know, rapid development of things. It's, it's uh, great for making a very flexible platform, but it's not something that you want to put your, your life on the line for.